Hey, you, in those bushes, do you want to learn to become an elite sniper like this? Hey, look, Firefly, watch yourself. Do you want to learn how to 360 no scope like this? Uh, yeah, so you kind of have to use the scope to use the hunting rifle, but still, what about a point blank shot like this? Well, why don't you come out of those bushes and I'll show you. Dr. Poop Love here, and today I want to teach you how to use the hunting rifle in The Last of Us multiplayer. And if you want to see any tip videos for Factions 2, whenever that comes out, why don't you quickscope that subscribe button? But let's get right into it. The first tip I have for you is all about positioning. Most of the work that you need to do as a sniper is done before you even start looking down that scope and that is by getting into the right place at the right time. This comes down to two things that you need, and that is map knowledge and enemy awareness. In order to have map knowledge, you need to be intimately familiar with each map. You need to know it and love it. And you need to know where the sight lines are. Now the sight line is a line of sight from your position across the map to a spot where you may be able to find the enemies. Typically a good sight line is something that looks down upon a supply box or another heavily traffic zone by the enemy. If you wanna see some of the sight lines that I use, why don't you check out this 100 headshots for 100 subscribers live stream that I have where I spent the entire time trying to get headshots with a hunting rifle and shows a lot of the sight lines that I regularly use when sniping. The second aspect that you need to know is enemy awareness, because if you're not looking in the right spot, you're not gonna shoot anyone. Now, there are a couple of things that can help you with enemy awareness. The first thing is to know where the enemy is expected to be at any given time. You can use your teammates as clues, and knowing that whenever an enemy spawns in, they're gonna be spawning in typically on the opposite side of the map in a spot where your teammates aren't. Additionally, perks can be helpful in helping you have better enemy awareness. Now, one of the perks you'd use is awareness, which helps you easily identify where the enemy is. Hawkeye, which helps you track enemies that have been marked. And sharp ears, which rejuvenates your listen mode much quicker. Skills like these can really help you with your enemy awareness. Now, once you put your map knowledge and your enemy awareness together, it can help you know where to look and when to look down specific sight lines to get that smooth, smooth headshot. Check this scenario out. In this case, I am over here. My teammates are also over here. So I know that the enemy is likely going to be across the other side of the map. Now I would find a sight line that allows me to view across the map to where I believe the enemies would be. Putting these basic principles together will help you know where and when to scope in. The next tip I have for you is to check out my video, 10 tips to improve your aim in The Last of Us multiplayer. This video gives you 10 very specific steps that you can take to improve your aim, and all of these tips are applicable to using the hunting rifle. By putting those tips into practice, it's gonna help you improve your aim and become a better sniper. The next tip I have for you is to understand when to use quick scoping versus hard scoping. Both of these are essential to being a good sniper. Now, quick scoping is very reactionary. Typically, you are going to be quick scoping when you are alerted to an enemy's presence and you want to react quickly in order to get that headshot. What you're going to need to do is when you see an enemy, you, you pre-aim your camera before scoping in, scope in and then drag over to the head using the built-in aim assist to make it easier. It's a quick motion and it takes some practice, but once you get used to it, you'll soon become an MLG beast. Now a hard scope is usually predictive. And what I mean by that is you are hard scoping predicting that an enemy is going to pop up in front of your scope. Now, when doing this, 
it's not advised to just simply sit there scoping in, not paying attention to your surroundings at all. No, you want to be strategically hard scoping, scope in, unscope, move your position, scope in again until if you're right about your prediction, the enemy pops into frame. You're going to be better about hard scoping in the right position when you have a better ability of knowing where the head is going to appear by understanding where the head is in alignment to doorways, behind cover, or in relation to other objects around the map, it's gonna help you know that you're positioned in the right place. Obviously, if you're not positioned in the right place, you should drag your scope to the right position to get that headshot. My next tip for you is knowing when to push. What I mean by this is when you get a headshot, one immediate reaction you may have is to sprint forward to try to finish the deal. And you, don't necessarily always want to do that. Sometimes you're going to get headshots and you're going to have to just let the enemy get revived by their teammates because there's not really a clear way for you to finish them without dying yourself. So you need to make a judgment call. If you down an enemy and you have a throwable, it typically means you could be in a good position to push as long as you can push to a spot behind cover where you can reach. If there's no enemies around, then you can push without really worrying about it, but you have to be pretty sure about that first. And as you get better and better at quick scoping, your ability to push forward will be increased because you will have a better reaction time. And if you do get caught in a scenario where you push and maybe shouldn't have, you could quickly react and get a headshot in. Now, my next tip for you is mastering the point blank shot. Now, the point blank shot is essentially a quick scope shot, but just much, much closer to the enemy. And if you think about it, when you're that close to the enemy, the head is actually a bigger and easier target to hit. But what's crucially important here is that you are very solid on your ability to pre-aim. If you can pre-aim well enough and scope in towards the head, you only will need to make a minor adjustment to make the point blank headshot that you need. And sometimes you just have to close your eyes and pray to the naughty gods. Now my next tip for you is understanding enemy movement during certain actions and using that to your advantage to get a headshot. If you smoke an enemy, they're going to undergo this forced animation and you're gonna be able to know exactly where their head's gonna to be to get the shot. Similarly, if an enemy is behind cover and they are either healing or throwing a throwable, their head is going to pop up slightly above cover during that action. And as a result, you can take advantage as a sniper and get that headshot. The next tip I have for you is to go for the trick shots. And I mean, just go for it. Sometimes it's gonna work out, sometimes it won't, but it's always gonna be satisfying when you make it. This includes shooting through smoke, trying to judge as much as you can where the head's gonna be and just taking the shot. Also, shooting through the van windows works. Um, maybe Dr. Pooplub hasn't done this one yet, but a lot of people have, and so, always go for the shot when you can. Now, before we get to our last tip, I wanna show you some loadouts that can be effective when sniping. This loadout is the Dr. Poop Love Special. This is the one that I've been using lately, and I really enjoy it. You have your hunting rifle, a nine millimeter, sharpshooter three, which reduces the pain wobble so I can get headshots more easily when I'm getting shot by someone else. First aid training one, which allows me to heal quickly. Second chance one, which feeds me a health kit every time I get shot to less than half health. And sharp ears three, which gives me plenty of listen mode to help with my enemy awareness. I've been using this loadout and it's been really effective for me. Now, if you wanna be a little bit more stealthy, you could switch sharpshooter three for covert three and maybe even first aid training one for a silenced hunting rifle. And if you wanna be a little bit more supporting to your team, maybe switch Sharp Ears 3 for Hawkeye 2 so you can help your team identify enemies by marking. 
or Reviver 2. As a sniper, you may be hanging more towards the back, so you might be in a perfect position to revive your teammates. But using any of these kind of combinations can be really effective loadouts for using the sniper. My last tip for you is to practice. And when I mean practice, I mean don't rely on your sidearm. If you wanna truly get better as a sniper, you need to prioritize your hunting rifle above all else. And what I mean by that is no matter what scenario or situation you are in, don't rely on throwables as a crutch. Don't rely on your sidearm as a crutch. Rely on your hunting rifle because that's the only way you're truly gonna get better. I know a lot of people that feel like they're in a dicey situation. They're, they just wanna switch to their sidearm and get the easy down, but that's not gonna help you improve and get some of those more advanced hunting rifle shots that you would wanna get to be better. And those are my sniper tips. So. Why don't you put some of these into practice and let me know how it works for you in the comments. Or if you have any additional tips, leave them also below. And if you want to see some more tip videos, why don't you check out this playlist. Or for some Factions 2 predictions, check this one out. But that's all from me. So long, Pooper Troopers.